everyone, this is Melody with designbymelody.com. Today I'm going to share with you how I take apart and use my Studio Calico kits or any other collection kit that I get and I work with. So first what I do is I take out the paper. I have my card stock here, my plain card stock. I have my pattern paper here and I have all my embellishments here. The only thing I've done here that you have that you won't see is I've actually taken everything out of the package and I've disassembled things such as this frame was all put together. I went ahead and t took it apart that way it's ready for use. But you can see I already took the, the packaging off the ribbon. I've taken, um, I've taken things out of, their, out of their little packaging and everything. The only thing, I did leave the letters together that way they don't totally go everywhere. Um, but basically, this is the kit here. I have this 8.5 by 11 little pocket, and this is where I store my supplies throughout the month. So I'll go ahead and just put, I didn't take the rub-ons out of here either, just in case they got stuck to something else. But I go ahead, even these little advertisements I keep in here so I can use the journaling cards. I put everything, all of the embellishments in this little 8.5 by 11 envelope. Sometimes if you have a full package of thickers, they will not fit in here, so I just keep them outside. But I put anything that fits in here, including the stamp as well. So this part is ready to go. Next, I have a cropper hopper folder, and this is a 12 by 12 folder, and I have it labeled current project. And this is where I'll put everything else. I'm still working with the papers that have the fold in it um, that I mentioned whenever I did the kit reveal. And Studio Calico did contact me back, and they said that they are going to send me replacement papers in my November kit. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, they were very quick to respond to my to my um, email about the damaged package, um, so I was very happy about that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so I'm putting I go ahead and put my cardstock in the folder. I don't typically use solid backgrounds. Um, sometimes I'll use it as a mat for a, a, a pattern piece of paper that's not quite cut to a 12 by 12 to use for a 12 by 12 layout. Um, but typically I will cut the pattern, the large um, solid cardstock pieces apart and use them either as mats for the photos or card bases if I do a lot of cards this month or um, just as different layering pieces on my layouts. So I'm going to set those aside as well. Then I have my pattern paper. And this one, as you can tell, is a cut-apart sheet of paper. It does have a solid background that I could use, but I personally like to use the cut-aparts. So I'll go ahead and trim this apart, as well, off, as well as cut off all the border strips, because I will, if they have a pattern border strip on the opposite side, I will try to incorporate that this month. And then I will show you how I actually plan out my month before I even start working with the kit. Okay, now I have all my border strips cut, and it just happened to be that this month every single piece of pattern paper had a decorative border strip on the opposite side. That does not always happen, but this month it did. I have my cut apart sheet cut apart, so I'm putting the, these cut aparts in here in the 8.5 by 11 folder with the rest of the embellishments. I'm going to put the border strips, because they're 12 inches long, they will not fit an 8.5 by 11 envelope, so I'll go ahead and put them in here with my solid cardstock to use throughout the month. And lastly, I'm left with all of my pattern paper. Now, this month I am going to have to be a little bit more creative just because I cannot use some of these as whole pieces because of the crease, or if I do use them as a whole piece, then I'll have to um, strategically place an element over that fold just so you can't see it. Some of the patterns you can't really tell like this camera piece even though the crease is right here you cannot really tell but if I were to use the other side it has a visible crease. So just depending on how I I work this out depends on if I'll use these as whole pieces or I may cut these out and just use them as you know a 7 by 12 piece you know and piece different things together so I'm not really getting that in depth in the planning right now Right now, I'm just going to pair photos up with the pattern paper so I know which pieces I want to keep whole, which pieces I don't have a plan for, and I can go ahead and cut apart, or you know whatever the plan is. So first, I have all of my pattern paper here, and I have my photos here, and these are just photos I've printed over time. Um, I always, anytime there is a um, coupon for different print places like Target or, or 
archivers or whatever, I always take advantage of those print, those um, print sales as well as typically I'll add a few photos to it. So I just kind of collect photos that I want in a scrapbook. Some of them are printed at 3x4, um, so they're 2 to the 4x6. Some of them are printed 4x6. I don't think, well, I may have a few um, odd sizes in here. This one's a little bit smaller than a a 4x6, but it's, it's a little bit larger than a 3x5 as well. So this is kind of an odd size photo, but I have everything in here. I do have a couple larger photos, 5x7s, but those are kept at a different place. I only typically print those when I am going to scrapbook them right then. So what I'm going to do is just lay out my papers here. I'm going to pick the sides I want to use. I don't, I'm not a huge print fan of this black and white camera print. I like the cameras individually, but I don't like it as a whole print, so I'll probably use this side. And this can change throughout the month. This is just kind of a basic what I'm going to do. I'm not 100% sure what I like best on that one, so I'm going to do the green side for now. This one... I do like this side the best because I have a lot of grid patterns already. So I'm just laying them out on the desk so I can see them. Not a huge floral fan, so I will use the pink side. Again, we have another grid paper, but I'm not a, a huge fan of this plaid, so I'll probably use the grid paper on this one. We have this camera. On this one... I do like this camera print, but I also like the polka dot. So this one may be up for debate. I'm going to leave it on the polka dot side right now and see if I have anything to match with it. And this one, okay. This side's cute, but I totally love yellow diagonal stripes for some reason. So this one is going to stay there. So as you can see, I just have all of the papers laid out on the desk. No rhyme or reason, just laid out so I can see the sides I like. Now I'm going to go through my photos and just lay them out on what I think works best. Some of them will jump out automatically and some of them won't. A lot of it has to do with the colors in the photos. For instance, this photo has a lot of blue in Kaylin's shirt and I have teal on my shirt. It's a very sunny photo. So I'm gonna put this with that light blue triangular paper. These photos don't necessarily go together as far as coloring because one's printed in color and one's not. Um, but they were taken on the same day at the same event. So I'm going to place them together for the moment. I'm just putting the photos off to the side over here that I'm not going to scrapbook with, with this kit. And these are from different events. Like this is a, a photo from our pregnancy um, photo shoot. And I've already scrapbooked some of these photos, but these are these are ones I still want to scrap like I just haven't done yet. Hmm. Not sure which photo I like over here, so I'm laying them both there for now. And these some of these photos are from a span of ten years. Just have not scrapped it, booked them for whatever reason yet. For instance, this photo, Wanda has a lot of pink in her shirt, and it's just, the coloring has a lot of orange and reds in it, so it looks a little over, it makes the whole photo look pink on this pink paper. You guys are hearing Kaylin sing in the background. Obviously, I have a ton of photos, and look here, same photo, one slightly smaller and has better coloring. So I'm going to put them here together. One is a little bit more 
One's been edited and one has not. You can see this one is a little bit more toned down. This one, my cheeks are very rosy. So we'll see. I'm going to put them both there for now. I didn't even realize I had multiple photos. And again, these are all from the same event. So. This is also where I determine how many photos are going to go on each layout. If I have anything that matches, I'll place it together. This take this does take a process, um, but I'm pretty much done. I have a photo on every pattern paper here, and we will see. Okay, so this is what I have at the moment. I'm going to show you. I have some there. I have these over here. Okay, so we'll start here at the top. This green one, I only have one photo on it, so this will definitely be paired with this. There is another photo that apparently I did not print that goes with this event, um, so I may go back and print that throughout the month. But for now, I know this paper is called for, and it's already um, set aside for this photo, so I will not cut it apart, so I just stack it. Again, this is another one with just one photo paired with it, so that'll be separate. This one, these photos are not from the same day, and obviously you can see they're different sizes, but they kind of go together. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave them here together, and I may make that a two-photo layout. This one here are those two photos that are the same exact photo, just one is edited and one is not. So I'll go ahead and leave them together as well on that piece. And I'll determine when I'm actually doing my layout what goes where. All right, this one I have two totally different photos. This one's from Halloween and this one's from our pregnancy photos. I'm just kind of, I like the black and white, but I also like the black Halloween, or the dark Halloween background for this photo. I think I'm gonna stick with the Halloween one. This one I have three different photos, um, but I'm going to go with, this one's from the State Fair, this is from Father's Day. I'm going to go with the Father's Day one. I don't know if you guys can see it, but Kaylin's wearing a striped yellow and white shirt. So that'll go here. And then on this one, hmm, I could make this a two photo layout, uh, but I'm going to go with this one. This is a family photo. Okay, so I have all of this pretty much set out and determined, and I did go ahead and pair at least one photo with every single pattern paper. Sometimes I don't do that. If I have a pattern paper, I just don't have anything to match with it, or if I have a basic one like this grid that I don't feel like cutting up um, or using as a whole layout, I'll leave it with the solids and I'll cut it up. So for now, basically all I'm gonna do is I just take my photos, I don't attach them, I just stack them on top of each other. I just leave them right here together. Make sure I have something paired up with each one. If I'm concerned that they may get jostled around, I'll go ahead and lay them out and snap a photo with my phone so I have them and if they get moved around, I don't have to worry about them. But I don't think they're going to get jostled around too much, so I'm going to leave them like they are stacked up and I'm going to slide them right in the back of this folder right behind the solid card stock. So now I have everything laid out. I have all of my embellishments ready to go. I have my photos paired up with my pattern paper. I have my extra border strips as well as my solids here. So now whenever I'm ready to scrapbook, I just go through here from this kit. I'll pick one pattern paper with the photo or the, or the multiple photos that are in here. I'll pull this out and I'll just start working with it. And then throughout the month, if I do end up cutting this apart, I'll put the scraps in the front here so I can use them on another layout I work with. So that's pretty much how I use my kits. I plan them this way. It makes it very easy if I only have 10 or 15 minutes to scrapbook, I can just come in here, pull something out. It's already pretty much the basics are planned out as far as the photos and the um, pattern paper that I'm gonna use as my background. So I can just start on it. If it's in process, I can just slide it right back in here, leave it on my desk or put it somewhere else that it won't get messed up and then I'll be good to go. All right, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, please email me at designbymelody at gmail.com or visit my blog at www.designbymelody.com. Thank you.